everyone back to engineering conversations and today we have another female engineer with us today please do introduce yourself hi everybody um, my name is jenny harrison i'm a principal engineer at acom in manchester uh, i am a chartered civil engineer and i specialize in the highway uh, sector Thank you um, for that introduction, Jenny. What inspired you into engineering? Um, well, I um, have always been interested in maths <clears throat> and I liked physics and science. And when I was in sixth form, um, my school took part in an engineering education scheme project where we had to design a moving bridge. And I, I did it because I was interested and then I was like, I want to be a civil engineer. Um, ironically, when I got to university, I didn't like structural engineering, but it, it really inspired me. I enjoyed the problem solving aspect and thinking about all the constraints um, and what you needed to do to, to, to get the design over the line. I, I really enjoyed that. So that inspired me. So in your everyday, in your everyday line of work, um, what does that typically entail? Um, I am a consultant um, civil engineer. So civil engineers are responsible for designing, um, constructing, maintaining uh, big infrastructure projects. And I am a consultant, so that means I do designing. Um, I spend most of my time in the office, as, as most people do. And pre-COVID, occasionally I would go out to sites to, to look at projects. So I, I do designing and um, so I would look at designing a, a road surface water drainage systems that sort of thing as I have progressed in my career I probably do less designing and I supervise other people do, doing designing um, and that you can also move into different fields so I'm currently on a secondment to a local authority Salford City Council and I'm doing project management so it's using my sort of transferable skills as a civil engineer to, to manage the projects Thank you for showing us that, um, especially the transition um, as you progress through a career from um, first doing the design to now supervising other young engineers um, who are in the industry and working with you. What was your route into engineering, mostly looking at um, your qualification skill sets? Or whether you, or even from secondary school apprenticeship, how did you go into engineering? Um, I did A-levels at secondary school. I did maths, physics and graphics and a random AAS of history. Um, I then studied civil engineering at the University of Manchester and I graduated in 2009. I then joined ACOM soon afterwards and I've, I've been there ever since. Uh, I'm now chartered with the Institution of Civil Engineers and I, I um, achieved that four years ago, um, which I'm very proud about. Um, there's lots of different routes into the industry though. That's, I've, I've taken one route there of A-levels, university, graduate job. Um, a lot of people do A-levels and then apprenticeship or even GCSEs and apprenticeship. Um, so there's, there's lots of different routes and, and, and I would say don't let it be a barrier. Um, if you want to become a civil engineer and the tuition fees seem a lot for university and let's be honest, they are quite a lot. There's, there's different routes. Um, sometimes a company can pay your fees. Um, I think just just um, be just be open to the different options. Okay, that's really good. You say people should be um, look at different options because always we think there's only one way. Um, there's only one way to to either a, a degree, but there are different ways to still be an engineer. You don't always have to go through the union, like you said. I feel tuition fees will still keep going up. I think uh, they will too. <laughs> Um, so far in your career, what would you say has been the most challenging part of being an engineer, especially when all the statistics are showing that um, the male to female ratio with males um, being way, way much more in the engineering industry? Uh, that's true. There is definitely a, a male, it's a male dominated industry. However, I've not faced any, <clears throat> excuse me, any any issues with it being male dominated. My the challenges I faced have been when you're working on a demanding project and you've got lots of deadlines and trying to balance your priorities to, to meet the deadlines. That's what I found the most difficult, but also it's the most interesting 
um, because it, it keeps you it keeps you on your toes and you've got to plan how you're going to do your work. But I suppose I'm lucky I've not faced any, any none of the challenges have been because it's been a male dominated industry. It's, it's sort of the na- just the nature of the work. Some, well, some of the misconceptions out there is that it's only males that do engineering um, and for some women they get worried and I'm like um not always in some industries or some companies yes but sometimes that would not even be the challenge that you're going to face the challenge is mm-hmm. probably the work um, that you need to actually get done um, with your current with your um, in your current role do you have any interaction um, with just engineers or you work with both engineers and non-engineers and how has that how has that been for you so far um i work with engineers and non-engineers and i think it's just a part of part of the industry you typically will work on multidisciplinary projects um, you know, for the bigger, at least for the bigger project. So, for example, I worked on Manchester Metrolink, uh, which is a tram system in Manchester. So, with that, there is a highways element, but there's, there's more over is a, a rail element. Um, you've also got structures, environment, uh, lots and lots of different disciplines, and you've got to work together to, to get the project done. But frequently, you will have non engineers, so you might have transport planners, uh, traffic modelers who might not have an engineering background. Uh, and that they also need to be involved in the project. And I don't treat anybody differently. We're all we're all in the same team. We're all on a project team. We're, we're working together. But you may just have to change how you explain things. So if, if I'm speaking to someone in the structures team, we could perhaps have a very technical conversation about something related to the project. But if it's someone who is not from an engineering background, we don't need to go into that technical detail. We can we can talk about the concepts, talk about the big picture. So it's it's horses for courses. Um, but yeah, I think most people in, in civil engineering and probably most of engineering will be multidisciplinary teams and you've got to think about how you communicate with others. Um, but we're all part of a team, so so let's work together. Um, I feel like most people, because engineering is such a technical degree, most people forget um, communication. They feel it's getting into the nitty gritty, doing all the difficult problem solving but then I feel like a really crucial part is being able to communicate what it is that you do to the technical people as well as the non-technical people just so that you can work in a team because I'm just assuming that if you were to communicate with the non-engineers and you went so technical they'll probably just look at you like what is happening here today That's, I think that's how most people would be like, what's, what's going on? I don't understand this language. So communication becomes very, very crucial. It does, it does with uh, members of the public as well. Um, so part of my role has been in getting involved in consulta- consultations with the public. Mm-hmm. So members of the public, some might be engineers, some probably not, you know, lots of different, lots of different people from different backgrounds. You've got to be able to communicate what you're doing, what your proposed project is going to be and the impact on that individual or group you've got to be able to do that that's a big part of being an engineer it's one thing designing a road but you've then got to tell people why you buy the roads there and and how it's going to impact them um, and not everybody's great at that um i think you know we, are, we all have different um skill sets um but you still need to be able to communicate it and um, i've done quite a bit of stem work where i've gone into schools and spoken to pupils of all different ages and you've got to be able to explain what you, you do to a child. Um, so that's completely different language and just, you know, sim- simple terms. So you've got to be able to communicate your project and the reasons why to everybody. And that's a big part of being an engineer. Um, what advice would you give to any female or young girl who wants to pursue a career in engineering, especially um, let's say they are getting to year 11, they're probably doing A-levels and they've been seeing engineering everywhere and they're like, um, should I go into this? What advice would you give to them? I would say go for it. If you like maths and you've got an inquiring mind and you're curious and you like problem solving, go for it. There's lots of different types of engineering. Um, I'm, I'm, here, I'm here to big up civil engineering, but there's all sorts of different engineering. 
and I don't I think anybody's background or gender or, or sexuality or anything like that don't let that be a barrier if you want to do something and you like maths and you you, you like the problem solving challenge element of it go for it um, I would suggest do some research into different types of engineering it's a very broad field I'm a civil engineer, my sister's a chemical engineer, um, you know, there's mechanical engineer, aerospace, there's all sorts of different different um, careers, all with interesting career paths and, um, you know, rewarding careers at the end of it. So, yeah, just do some research. Don't, don't, be, don't be worried about the stats. OK, it's a male dominated industry, but don't let that put you off. Um, that's my advice. What do you see into the future of engineering, especially when it comes to the advancement of technology and sustainability? You can talk about this in general, or you can relate this to civil engineering. Um, that's a really good question. Uh, I'm going to answer it with a civil engineering uh, perspective, but I think it applies to all sorts of engineering. Uh, I think we're going to use technology more. I think COVID has been very disruptive to everybody, but I think it's really brought up, um, brought in on advances in technology. We're all working from home. We're using video calls like it's it's second nature now, um, and, and we're doing that so we can we can work remotely and we can work safely. Um, I think in with a civil engineering perspective, we're going to use technology to become more sustainable. So that might mean designing more electrical vehicle charging points um, on our schemes in a, in a car park, for example, that, that perhaps becomes the norm. Uh, and we're going to have to do more with less. Um, I don't think we'll be building brand new roads in the middle of the countryside or not as much as we perhaps used to do in the past. We'll be looking at what we can do with our existing infrastructure. How can we improve it? You know, it might be something as simple as changing the, the time is on signals or changing changing priorities or adding an extra lane here or there. I think I think that's more of the way we're gonna go um, rather than wholesale new projects. I have a question for well, I know for most civil engineers going on site and seeing the structure come from ground up is one of um, at least for, for some of the civil engineers that I've interviewed, they say that's one of the most satisfying parts of your job. So with COVID and its restrictions and also just being safe, how is that being done now? Um, how um, are you doing that? That's, that's a really good question. It is definitely one of the highlights going on site and seeing your design take shape and become a real reality. Um, I think some people are still going out onto site and then being very careful and thinking about how they can act in a COVID secure manner. Um, and really thinking about what needs to go in the risk assessment and how are you actually going to walk, work and walk, like walk around a site. Um, I live opposite a school that has been extended in COVID and the, the, the construction has still continued. So it is still going on. But it's a shame because there'll be projects that are happening and you won't get to see your designs being built. You might, you'll be able to see them at the end, but you, there might not be the opportunity to go around, go around now. I wonder if people are doing more virtual site visits. So if you have someone who's actually on site and they've got a camera and they can pan it round and you can have a look. But it wouldn't be the same as doing a proper like site supervision role where you need to be checking the quality. I don't think you could probably do that yeah. <clears throat> effectively from remotely. But again, I think this all comes back to technology and, you know, the days of people having A1 drawings on site are probably over and everyone's going to have iPads or other tablets, um, you know, and, and, and work like that. Um, but I think COVID is a disruptor, but there's lots of opportunities to, to, to work differently and try and work more efficiently. Yes, um, I totally agree with you because I feel like even if COVID vanishes um, tomorrow, for most places, industries, we are still going to have to do certain, yes, people are still going to change the way they still do things. Um, some, for some industries, they might just go back to their old, their old ways. But I feel like almost everybody, every industry is adopting some new way of doing what they usually, um, what they usually would have been doing. What's your favourite and least favourite part of your job? 
Uh, my favourite part is um, the problem solving. So a client sets you a challenge, whether that's designing a new cycle lane or a new car park or, or, or whatever it might look like. You've then got to think about the, the project, the constraints, what design size you're going to use, how you're actually going to design it, how's it going to be constructed, uh, all, all those sort of things. What, you know, when you think about all that and then when you get to a design and when it gets to site and it actually gets built, that for me is the most exciting bit. Uh, least least favourite, um, obviously we need to be very conscious of how much we're spending on projects and the, the programme. I think the spending side is probably my least favourite, working out how much money we've spent, but I know that's a very important part of my job. So. I still, I still have to do it, and it's very important. It's just not that exciting. Uh, you know, I we've like, got to. I'm oh, sorry. Sorry. I like this question because, just like with everything, um, even in your job role, there are things that you're going to love doing, and then there's the, going to be that one little tiny bit that you're like, I don't, I don't really love it, but it's part of the work, and you just need to work, um, push through it and get that work done. So. Because I feel like sometimes most young people feel like everything is just going to be perfect and they need to love everything 100%. But sometimes your the things you love will be like maybe 70% and the bits that you don't like will probably be 30%. And that is okay. So um, we've come to what I call the last final fun question because um, what do you do outside of engineering um, that most people will be quite surprised to find out that you are involved in. Um, I think it's uh, key to have a work-life balance and to do to work outside engineering. Um, I don't do anything particularly exciting. I uh, recently got into running this year. Um, I started doing the Couch to 5K with some local running groups. Um, and I, I wasn't, I'm not really a runner still, but I am persevering with it and you know, I can join the groups, I can go for an 8k run and feel good about it. So I, that's my release. I really enjoy doing that. I can just switch off, forget about work, just go for a run. And um, I also spend lots of time with my family, as, as everybody is at the moment. Um, um, me and my partner have got a 15 month year old daughter. So she takes up a lot of our time, but she's worth it. So that, that's that's the main things I do outside of engineering. That's running, um, going outdoors. I think that's great. But one of the things I love to do is hiking. I can hike and I need someone to say, Sophia, you need to get back home. Otherwise I'll, just, <laughs> <laughs> otherwise I'll just be going. My friends are like, what's wrong with you? But yeah, that's that's one of the things that I do. And then always family time is always a good time. So um, hopefully your daughter is keeping you busy as well. <laughs> she is. And she likes to wake us up in the night as well, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, um, Jenny, that brings us to the end of this engineering conversation. It's been lovely having this conversation with you, sharing your um, career as well as your engineering experiences with this audience. And we are truly grateful for your time as well as sharing, sharing your story with us. Thank you. It's been very nice to meet you and uh, good to have a chat. So um, thank you very much. Thank you. So